when I first 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 started making beats, um, I used to take a Creator Records to the studio, and the engineer used to sample it for me. So that's how I started making beats, or actually the pause tapes thing. First was the pause tapes, then was going to the studio with a crate. But um, the thing about me is that um, I get bored with the same routine, you know. So I'm, I'm always looking for something new. So a lot of old guys, they stay in the one thing, but I'm always like at least five years behind. So right now it's 2020. I'm at like 2015. So like I, I, uh, I, I always learn a lot of different things. I learned all the NPCs. I learned SP1200. I learned Triton, a motif, a machine. I learned Fruity Loops, Ableton. I learned because it just, you know, it just keeps me interested. It keeps that fire, you know, making beats. I've been making beats for like 30 years, probably or more. So it's like, you can't just make beats on the NPC for 30 years, you know? You have to like, you know, so now I learned how to play bass. I learned how to play guitar, learn music theory and different things like that because I, i'll get bored if, if it's just one thing you know well here's the thing again with the old thing uh I'm, I'm i'm an old guy but i'm always evolving keeping the roots but evolving with the roots you know i never forget where i came from and where hip-hop originated and stuff like that in music but you always have to advance you have to have some type of advancement some type of e evolvement so I'm not afraid of sampling it. I've made a lot of beats with MP3s, you know, but I've also had 45s of $300 records. So it's like, and I found them, you know, so it's like uh, I dug in a place with the roaches and the rats and the hillbilly towns. I've done all that. So it's like I could sample an MP3 because, you know, I dug with Spinner and no ID and dug in for this. So it doesn't matter, you know. So if somebody comes to me, hey, you're sampling on an MP3. Well, guess what? You know, doesn't matter. So, so yeah, it does. At the end of the day, it's the music, you know. It doesn't matter where you get it from, because you could grab a forty-five, rare, whatever. But it's like, if the song sucks, if the the lyrics suck, or the beat sucks, does it matter if it's MP3 or forty-five? Well, I'm horrible at art, like as a drawing. I love watching it. I love going to museums and all that, but and graffiti and all and the colors. I love that stuff. But um, as far as drawing, I'm horrible. It's not, it's not even a thing. Um, more of a fan of that. Uh, as far as breaking, it, it, the same. I'm a fan of that. I look at it. Um, when when I first first got into music, I used to listen to B96 and it was like 80s rock, and then you know uh, Michael Jackson Thriller, you know. So, but after that. Um, GCI and like it was a BMX or something like that uh, played a gem on it and Roxanne Roxanne and that's pretty much what got me into hip hop then after that Run DMC took over and then after that like Dave when 88 hit and it was over you know because it was uh, KRS1 Rakim, Big Daddy Kane P you know whoever you know so after that I was a slave to hip hop <laughs> and to music because uh it just became part of me because, uh, you know, growing up around the neighborhoods that I did, uh, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of gangs and stuff like that. So, it, you know, I actually experimented with that. But thanks to hip hop, I, I got focused in there. I became a hermit. I grabbed my little records and started just making music. And that was it. I was gone. to another world. I learned about jazz music from producing and sampling. Like I learned... It's, it's it, like you said, it's a history lesson. You learn about your own culture, your own history um, through music and through sampling. And then a lot of times I feel like as an MC, if I'm sampling a song that's a classic to me that I love, you better really come with it with the lyrics. Like if, you, if you're really gonna, if you're gonna try to do a reinterpretation of something that, you know, somebody else created and you're just innovating off of it, like you gotta have something to say. You gotta have. There's a gotta be a reason and a purpose, not just so I can make some money off of this. Because then, because then, you know, like what are you really doing at that point in time? Um, that's not. That's, that's not work. It's not worthy. It's it's not. Um, it's not in my sense ethically correct to take something that somebody else put their heart and soul into creating it. And then you're going to chop it and then kick some garbage lyrics all over it. Like there has to be a reason, a purpose 
to what it is that you're doing to justify the fact that you're taking someone else's craft and sampling a piece of it. Um, but the, 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 the act of sampling to me has always been a, a way to get in contact with my past, my roots, my culture, and just know more about myself um, from the music that, that, that preceded what I'm working on. Lyrically for me, it was, it was Rakim, um, KRS-One. I mean, that's, that's my era is um, 88 to me will always be the greatest year of hip hop. Um, so it's Rakim, KRS-One. And then a lot of, a lot for me also as a, as a kid who was, um, grew up in the suburbs, De La. Like, um, you know, as I was trying to find my voice and, and, and feel like I could be myself rhyming. I didn't have to try to be like, like, cause I didn't, I wasn't Rakim. Like I didn't, I didn't grow up like Rakim, right? Um, so native tongues were helpful for me and just kind of being like, like, nah, do tell your story. Um, be on what you're on. Um, Chuck D, PE, you know? Um, so yeah, so, so for me, it was, it was, it was, it was those cats. And then I got, I also got into music. I, I always wanted to be a writer. I wanted to be an author as well. So I was really into poetry. And so I would look at the, the artists who I thought were very lyrical and whose writing would stand up as writing in and of itself. Um, and then, you know, and once again, that's, that's your Chuck D's and your, and your Rock Hems. Um, and nowadays it's your Kendricks, um, you know, people who write. Um, they can kick too, but they write. Yeah, writing was the first for me. Um, DJ and Tudo, um, I was never like, you know, Tone was was always, you know, a far superior DJ um, from from Jump. But we we both, we really got cool DJing. Like that's how, that's how me and Tony Number really got, got close. I had one turntable, he had one turntable. And so one week both turntables would be at my house and the next week both turntables would be at his house. And so that's how we, you know, that's how we really connected. Um, but it was clear that he was the DJ and I probably need to focus on the, uh, on the writing.